So you might find this interesting. We are still awaiting the launch of the X37B from a Falcon Heavy, which has been scrubbed four times now. But China just actually launched their own space plane, very similar to ours. And a lot of folks are saying this is no coincidence. While we await launching our own X37B for the seventh time, China launched their own top secret military space plane for the third time, which if all had gone according to plan, you know that ours would have been already launched around basically the same time. So that's another thing we didn't even mention, right? Is, is a couple hours ago, China made the third test flight of its version of the X-37. It okay. had as a Chinese version of the, of the X-37 space plane. Uh, and, and it gets launched from Jiuquan in the Gobi Desert like the Zhukui and it orbits for a few weeks or a few months, and then it lands on a runway robotically uh, at Lop Nor in the Chinese desert where the old original Chinese nuclear test was. And, uh, and so, uh, so, so, you know, uh, SpaceX may be having delays, but the Chinese aren't, <laughs> they're, they're, they're popping them off. And, and so this new Chinese space plane just got cataloged by the US Space Force uh, wow. in the expected orbit. Uh, and so we're going to be tracking it over the next few weeks, seeing seeing what it's up to. Wow, that's very interesting. So you heard it first, breaking news. Yeah, breaking news. I did not know about that. China's space plane also looks a lot like our own military space plane. Our U.S. military has two of these reusable space planes in their inventory. Each has a cargo bay that could fit a large refrigerator. They kind of look like small space shuttles. And our space planes have flown in space six times, some of the missions being as long as two and a half years. So how do they last that long? Well, they have deployable solar panels that generate power for longer endurance. So while we still wait to launch our own X-37B for the first time on a Falcon Heavy rocket, which I'll get into that in a second, Thursday, China sent its own space plane on a Long March 2F rocket from the Jiquan launch base in northwestern China. Not sure if I butchered that pronunciation. Now you might automatically assume that the US and Chinese space planes will be spying on each other, but keep in mind the orbits will not bring them too close together. Still, a US Space Force senior officer says that these are the two most watched objects on orbit when they're on orbit. He says it's probably no coincidence that they're trying to match us in timing and the sequence of this. So for our seventh launch, which should be coming pretty soon, I hope it doesn't slip all the way into January, but the Space Force hinted that the space plane would operate at a higher orbit than ever before, much of why it's going on a Falcon Heavy rocket. In the past, it's operated in low Earth orbit, some 110 to 500 miles above the ground, but Falcon Heavy can deliver payloads of 58,860 pounds, which is far more than the X-37B to geosynchronous orbit, more than 22,000 miles up. In other SpaceX news, the FCC has cleared SpaceX to test cellular Starlink on phones. And this will let SpaceX test their cellular Starlink system by using 840 satellites to beam the data to unmodified smartphones in over two dozen locations. SpaceX has 180 days or until June 14th to conduct the pilot experiment. In SpaceX's application, the company said at any given time, approximately 60 of these 840 satellite payloads will be serving handsets in the United States under this experimental authorization. Test sites include Mountain View, California, Kansas City, Kansas, Redmond, Washington, and Dallas, Texas, among others. Now, these tests are to find out if the cellular Starlink system will risk causing radio interference across the U.S. with other carriers and satellite providers. Companies like AT&T, Dish Network, and Global Star have voiced their concerns about the cellular Starlink system potentially disrupting their own services. But SpaceX says, no way, that's not gonna happen. They argue that the cellular Starlink system will only benefit U.S. consumers rather than pose a radio signal hazard. But keep in mind, this is a temporary authorization from the FCC, so, the FCC is able to pull the plug on the testing if they need to. Quote, in the event of any harmful interference caused under this grant of special temporary authorization, SpaceX must immediately cease operations upon notification of such interference. 
However, I'm a little bit concerned considering that the FCC recently denied a rural broadband subsidy to SpaceX based on standards that were, quote, made up on the fly, according to one of the FCC commissioners. So I hope that they don't make up that there is some interference in this testing. It's really hard to trust exactly what's going on right now. But SpaceX is aiming to launch the cellular Starlink system for T-Mobile and other partners sometime next year, starting first with text messages, voice and data will come around 2025. So this could be extremely helpful and I hope that it works out because this would make a huge uh, impact and greatly enhance our safety um, all around the country if we're able to access this type of service from our cell phone.